Hi, my name is Yong Hee McDonald. I was working at Adams County Detention Facility in Brighton, Colorado as a chaplain for uh, 20 years. While I was working there, I have met many amazing inmate leaders. And I would like to share Jonathan's story with you today. I was leading lots of worship services, actually 15 worship services every week at that time. In that worship services, there are many inmate leaders who can really preach well and who can lead the worship songs. And so one day I was asking, who would like to lead the songs today? And everybody was pointing at this one man. And they said, Jonathan, Jonathan. They all knew that Jonathan was a great singer. So Jonathan came out, he led the song. And it was a wonderful uh, singer. He was a wonderful singer. And so later he wanted to see me. He was struggling a lot at first. And I could tell it, he was struggling. And he asked me, Chaplain, I wanted to ask you a question. And I answered him, you don't have to ask me any questions. You just have to do what God is asking you to do. And then he explained he was in for murder of a case. And he said that if he tells the truth, which is what God wanted him to do, he will be in prison for the rest of his life. And other people were telling him, don't, don't tell, tell the judge this and that, and so that you don't have to be in prison for that long. But God was asking him to tell the truth. And he was really struggling. And then later, slowly, he started changing. And he finally decided to do what God wanted him to do. So the day when he went to the, to the judge, I heard that Jonathan already received life without parole. And when he came back, I went to see him. So I called him out to the contact room and I asked him how he was doing. He said he was doing fine. And I thought he would be so sad and depressed looking because of his sentencing. No, he was smiling. And he said, Chaplain, I would like to sing for you. I wrote this song for Jesus. And he was singing how great God is and how forgiving he was. And I was almost in tears. I went to there to encourage him, to comfort him. But he was actually encouraging me that he was doing well. And he said, Chaplain, God answered my prayers. And I asked him, what was your prayer? He said, while I was growing up, I wanted to be a missionary. I told God I wanted to be a missionary. And here I made a decision to be a missionary in prison for the rest of my life. That really touched me. And I was almost in tears, actually, because his decision to serve God instead of uh, uh, trying to just get out of the prison, really, uh, it was amazing. He was reaching out to many people while he was waiting to go to state prison. He was leading a Bible study. He was leading songs in the worship service and preaching. He also wrote his stories, and his story is in the book. Jonathan served God, and he was determined to serve God. And after he moved to state prison, a reporter asked me, is there any prisoners that you can recommend for a story? I, and I said, Jonathan would be a good one. And they drove quite a long, long way to find Jonathan, and his story was published in the newspaper in Colorado. Uh, it, it was an amazing story, but also I met a chaplain from where he was. He was in Sterling uh, Correctional Facility, and this chaplain came and told me, I am so amazed and touched by Jonathan, how he served the Lord. And this chaplain was almost in tears. He was so touched. By Jonathan. And then later, when I was leading a worship service, this inmate told me, Chaplain, do you remember you baptized me? And then I remembered Jonathan was the one who brought him to the worship service, and Jonathan said, Chaplain, he wants to be baptized. So I baptized him. 
And so this man who was baptized, he said, before Jonathan, he was a gang member. He didn't know God. But it's because of Jonathan, he came to know God. And he was showing me this Bible. He said, Jonathan gave me this Bible before he left here. And he was just amazingly touched by Jonathan. And so this amazing story, I am just so thankful that I met Jonathan. But before he left, there was one letter that he received from Adam's mother. Adam's mother wrote a uh, letter to Jonathan, and Jonathan shared that letter with me. She said, I was praying that God will send a messenger to my son, Adam, and I believe, Jonathan, you are the messenger. It's because of you. He is talking about God now, and he thinks that you are so filled with the Holy Spirit. And the letter said, I want you to keep up with what you're doing. You have very, very uh, gentle, kind spirit. And remember what happened to Paul. He wrote lots of letters while he was in prison. And she said, I would like to send you my pastor's sermons. I want you to write to me so that wherever you are, we would like to pray for you and would like to be in contact with you. Jonathan is serving the Lord, and I have no doubt that his reward in heaven will be so great because his life is totally committed to serving God and saving the lost. Today, I want to make sure that while you're watching this, you know that Jesus is alive, and our life is short, and I want you to know that you can invite Jesus to your life. If you don't have peace, if you don't have any purpose in life, and there's something missing in your heart, Jesus may be missing in your heart. So I ask you to invite and pray. The Lord asked me to visit 500 churches to talk about prison revival, and there was one reason. That is to save one more person. I want to invite you to pray with me. Very simple prayer, but you can invite him. Jesus, I am a sinner. Please forgive me. I believe you died on the cross for my sins. Bless me with the Holy Spirit. Guide and direct me so that I can live a life that will please you. I want to know my calling so that I can love you and serve you to the fullest. Just open your heart. People cannot help you. I cannot help you. No one else can help you, but Jesus can help you. Thank you so much for listening.